Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Lucky, written by Katani77. This is the last time I'll be able to send a transmission, I fear. I wanted the Galactic Alliance to know the truth of what happened to Procyon 5, and not some political hack's interpretation. It was a slaughter. The only reason I'm able to record this is because my life pod was ejected many seconds before the Heragon. Here, a gone. Damn, translator busted again. Armada vaporized the fleet within a minute. Fortunately, they fared little better, and hope is on the way. I may just get lucky again. For the record, my name is Senior Chief Engineer Zolitz. Zolitz. If I survive, I'm going to throttle the Arcadian who made this damned translator. I was assigned to Warp Systems Architecture aboard the warp ship designated 0X-95, Seren. We were called to respond to an emergency because lit by the Arn. The translator got that one right for once. Those cold-blooded Karaz got themselves in some trouble, had we known. By the time we responded, it was far too late to save them. We were already next on the menu, however. The fleet that sat before us numbered in the thousands. There was no chance. The Heragon was preparing an invasion of the Quadrant of the Galaxy, and the poor feckers of the Darn expeditionary ship happened to find themselves at the Heragon rally point. As did we. Initial scans indicated a Class IX weapon system, particle beams, antimatter torpedoes, relativistic kinetic weapons, and fusion beams. Millions of gigawatts of energy made even the starfighters. Our ship was considered Class Seven. We never stood a chance. These monsters were carrying on fighters to what we, the Galactic Alliance, would consider orbital defense class weaponry. Why were they here with such firepower? We only ever encountered the Heragon when a random trader or diplomat ventured into the Alliance territory to likely engage in espionage. They were from deep core of the galaxy, far outside the Alliance borders. We hadn't even begun to really explore this quadrant of the galaxy. The first salvo of one of their frigates dropped our shields to nearly nothing. A core breach was imminent with the second. We managed to take out one of the frigates and a few fighters with EMP rounds, but there was no way that we were going to be anything but space slag. Captain Carlon ordered all hands abandoned ship and I happened to be standing right next to an escape pod when the order came across the neural net. I jumped in, hit the button, and prayed to Dereth that I was fast enough. As my pod ejected, the Seren was hit with a single fusion beam, only theoretical at that point within the Alliance, and it was vaporized. There wasn't even debris to speak of. The fighters of the Heragon didn't even bother to shoot the life pods down. I assume they decided to let us slowly suffocate in space in a quadrant that even the Galactic Alliance would be hard-pressed to reach, or use us as bait. It was at this moment the pod's limited senses detected a few dozen jump signatures, more meat to the slaughter. Sensor systems offline, power systems critical, two minutes of usable methane remaining. What I saw next will haunt me for the rest of my life. At least two dozen ships, massive in size, jumped into my view. The largest Terragon battleship was dwarfed by the largest of the incoming ships. The design I had never seen before in any Galactic Alliance fleet. My communicator system still had enough power to hear the new aliens begin communication. This is Admiral O'Riordan of the Terran Navy. We received a distress call from this location and found you instead. Since you are obviously a military fleet, we'll let you shoot first, if you're feeling lucky. The Heragon fleet opened fire with all of their weapons, a blinding glow of missiles, beams of light and heat radiated through the silence of space. This, uh, Terran Navy's shields barely registered any of it. Even the weapons that were able to pierce the shields exploded harmlessly against the silver ship's hulls. I see ya. Our turn. Came the Admiral's reply before the larger ship began dropping fighters and the frigates started pulsing blue streaks of light towards the Heragon fleet. One minute of usable methane remaining. 
And just like that, the Herogon were gone. Vaporized was just too simple of a word of what I observed. They just stopped existing. I couldn't see the entire sorte. But I don't think a single ship was lost from this Terran navy. My thoughts began to grow cloudy. At least, this threat from the Herogons was eliminated. Hopefully the Terrans will... find... mass. Life support failed. Hey, O'Malley, I think we got some fire breathers here. The sailor quipped as he dragged the last of the detected life pods. Breathable atmosphere detected. Opening life pod. You are right, man. The bipedal stranger spoke as consciousness returned. The translator seemed to be already adapted to their language. We scanned your life pod and made a bubble of atmosphere around your pods so they could be open safely. I don't know if you can understand me, but you're safe now. Those slimy bastards are dust now. As I came to, I saw several bipedal aliens that I had never seen before. Their faces weren't vastly different from the goal in appearance, but they were rather more pink and wearing what seemed to be breathing masks. Where, where, where am I? I stated to the alien observing me. You're safe. My name is Brigitte O'Malley of the Terran Navy Hospital Ship Refuge, and we're going to see to it that you and your crew get home okay. She checked her data device and turned back to me to say, We recovered 13 pods from the wreckage bearing your biosigns. I'm sorry for your losses of your crew. What should we call you? Epilogue. The Galactic Alliance warmly accepted the Terrans or humans as they preferred into the folds of our community. Of the 180 crew members of the Seren, only five survived, including myself, Chief Navigator Wolan, crewmate Tyrak, Quartermaster Tokaline, and, and a pilot named Cormine. The Alliance will be forever in debt to the Terrans for saving our kin. It would later be deemed that the humans had achieved a level 14 weaponry system an equally staggering power output from a dozen or so worlds that they had colonized. In theory, it is the hostility of their own world, a demon-class planet on the other side of civilized space that drove them to prioritize weaponry such. Either way, they are now the protectors of the Alliance, and we are all the better for it. Testimony at the Historical Archive of Kafan. Galactical Standard Year 8956 by Ambassador Zolitz of Acadia Prime. End of story. Story number two. Mad Science. Written by Average Cake Enjoyer. Mad Science means never stopping to ask what's the worst thing that could happen. Maxim 14. So you are telling me that you, Daisy, changed ten antimatter warheads to an asteroid and asked permission to, uh, in your words, uh, sling it at the alien bastards? Adams asked, a mouthful of chips. Yeah, Jamie dejectedly said, taking another swig of a drink. And you're mopey because they obviously said no. Yeah. Adams pinched the bridge of his nose. You're aware that each of those warheads could flatten the country and then some, right? But that's the point. I mean, they declared war on us first, so it's only fair that we get to bomb them. Right? You can't obliterate a planet because they got all pissy at us, he said, while tipping a bag of chips upside down, giving it a shake. Just let the diplomatic goons smooth it out. The only thing we did was the galactic equivalent of a parking ticket anyway. They declared war. War! They're harmless, dude. I doubt that they could scratch the paint of the ships even if they tried, he scoffed. Waving her bottle around haphazardly, she yelled, But they declared war! It's not fair! Sighing, he gave her a few pats on the head. There, there, you'll get your chance soon, I'll promise. Okay, she said, giving Adams an uneven smile before her head hit the table unceremoniously. Then a dull thud echoing around the empty mess hall. And uh, that's enough of that, he said with a chuckle, taking a bottle and sliding it across the table. Adam sat at his desk, he gazed, poring over the book in front of him. To him, this was bliss, peaceful silence spreading the air while he lounged around, reading his book. Nothing could ever ruin this for him. A distant shout came from behind his closed door. Adam! 
Letting out a groan, he slammed his head onto his desk. I guess I spoke too soon, huh? But even a few seconds later, his door swung open, Jamie standing in the middle of the doorway, a victorious look blasted on her face. I did it! Do I even want to ask? He said while reaching for a bottle of ibuprofen, preparing for an impeding headache that he was bound to get. It doesn't matter, I'm telling you anyways. He exasperatedly waved at her to continue. All right, go on then. Taking a few moments to rummage through her bag, she eventually pulled out a small canister with a window, a grey liquid splashing about inside. Holding it above her head, she yelled, Behold my greatest creation! What? You aren't impressed? She asked, head tilted. You made that? His eyebrows furrowed in confusion, clearly not expecting this. It looks like sludge. Not just any sludge, look, she said, prying open the lid and dropping a piece of candy she had into it. Adam saw the candy splat harmlessly into the liquid, the lolly just floating in it serenely, opening his mouth to say something about it being anticlimactic. He did a double take as he saw the goo eat the candy. Did it just, uh, yep, I made some nanites. You made great goo, he squeaked out, his voice going up an octave. Yeah, are you proud of me? She said, giving him a winning smile. An uncomfortable silence filled the air around him. Get the feck out of my room, he deadpanned. Her face fell at his words. What? W what did I do wrong? I don't want to be responsible for the mountain of paperwork I'll end up getting if you feck around with that and do something dumb. Like what? If you spill any of that, the whole ship kaput gone. And I don't know about you, but I would like to keep on living, thank you very much. Come on, it's not that bad. A voice trailed off, suddenly becoming meek. It is the banned weapon. But he banned it. The galaxy banned it. Even the eggheads who invented it banned it. Taking a deep breath, he buried his face in his hands just to... Just to get rid of it. Please? Fine. She grumbled, putting the canister back in her bag as she turned towards the door. I'll go throw them away then. And for God's sake, don't forget to deactivate the fecking nanites first, yeah? He shouted after her. And close my door on your way out. She sheepishly scratched her head, keeping her gaze firmly locked on the door. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, sure. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 